I can hear the gator. Here he comes. Do the same thing. Through the first 600 or so videos, I've had a lot of things go wrong, a lot of fails, and I thought uh, now would be the time to put those all together and just just get this out of the way. All right. So if you've got something to say about me, now's the time. But you're laughing with me, right? Not at me. All righty. So most of these are with tractors, but we have some other things going on too. And throwing this one way back with my oldest son, we were using a skid steer, not a track steer, but a skid steer, found just randomly on top of a hill of all places, a mud hole where we just happened to get our 10,000 plus pound skid steer stuck. And of course we had a mulcher head on the front. This isn't the only time this happens, by the way. Just about impossible. If you have a bucket on the front, you can use that bucket and that loader and work your way out. But with a mulcher, there's very little you can do. So we ended up piling a bunch of sticks underneath that, those tires, just kind of raising it up and stuffing stuff underneath there until we had enough traction to dig our way out. That was a learning experience to say the least. Maybe we didn't learn as much as we thought, or at least I didn't, because just this past summer, I had the track steer out here at our, at our new property, and I walked over this area, I drove the four-wheeler over this area, it seemed pretty darn dry to me, so I was like, hey, we'll graduate right up to the 13,000 pound track steer, that's no problem, it'll go right through there, and I was wrong, because it was like prehistoric muck that was down in there, and we buried that thing as bad as you can bury it. Well, there, there's worse. You guys have done, you've shown me worse. So I appreciate you making me feel good by showing your worse situations than I have. <laughs> but it ended up requiring us to get the, the Kubota tractor and, and yanking it out of there. We got it out of there pretty quick. It wasn't all that bad, but again, we had the mulcher head on there, the forestry head, and that is just a terrible tool to try to unstuck yourself. Now our poor John Deere Gator. Boy, this thing is, uh, I've, I've, I kind of like it now just because of how much I've hated on it. It's like I, I kind of just want to keep it just because of that. But I uh, was helping a buddy get unstuck off of a, a frozen lake. Had one tire go in way out there and we brought our gator out there and winched it and got that out no problem at all. And so I was like, okay, great. Just going to drive on around this low area here, get back up to the road and that'll be good to go. Except it wasn't. Um, ended up being a like a, a three attempt, three day ordeal to try to get it unstuck. Broke the front axle and a tie rod. It was a huge, crazy, cold pain in the butt to deal with. But we got it out of there eventually. I need to get one of those, what do they call them, the hijack lifts. That would have really saved the day out there, I think. But uh, that front axle being broken, four-wheel drive doesn't do a whole lot of good uh, when your axle is not, not working. Another knucklehead move that we made, overloaded our dump trailer. You know... I had big hopes for the big trailer, right? It was a very, it's a huge 20 foot high side trailer. You would think you could load that thing up and, and haul what you want into it. And that's what I discussed with the dealer when I bought it. This is what I want to do with it. 
No stickers on there saying how much weight it loads, which I think would be a really helpful thing, but regardless, it's my fault. I accept that. But uh, we overloaded this trailer with dirt very, very easily. And that was a bit of a disappointment to say the least. We were able to drive up in there, back drag with the, the bucket on the skid steer and get that dirt out until we had a minimal amount of dirt in there to lift it up. Way less dirt than I would have thought, but I'll never make that mistake again. Famous last words. A while back, it was late winter, maybe early spring, I can't recall exactly, and we've got a 2,000 foot gravel drive out at one of our properties, and I wanted to move the snow on there with the snow pusher in the rear blade, and it turns out all we did was push gravel. Problem was is that stone had not packed down and settled in. It was a fairly new driveway, and it wasn't frozen up anymore, and it was just a muddy mess, and everything wanted to sink down in it, and nothing wanted to ride high enough up on there. There's some lessons that could be learned there, which I think we tried this year, running a blade in reverse, like a rear blade in reverse so that doesn't sink down, maybe even a landscape rake. But I'll tell you, if you have something aggressive that wants to dig at all, and you don't have frozen gravel, that's gonna be a problem. The verdict, nope, the jury. The jury is still, jury is still out? The jury is still out on this, but I think it's narrowed down to either gum or elm, but some sort of nasty, splitting really wonky type of wood that we tried out on the Yapa wood processor and that stuff just is hard to split and that seemed to be the consensus in general from the comments in that video. Every other kind of wood split just fine but that stuff it, it's kind of like grainy in a weird way and just does not cut or split very easily. That stuff was a major fail and I'm going to be on the lookout for that kind of wood in the future to completely avoid it. Now one fail we did actually avoid was because of a 511 grill guard. I had lent out my 1025R to get some weekend projects done and we got it on video too but the 511 grill guard actually prevented the front end, the screen, potentially the radiator, whatever else is behind there from being damaged. Well I think you can see what happened you know it's it's easy when you're trying to dig something out or Maybe you get in too big of a hurry or something just misses the mark and then an accident happens and that's what happened here. But fortunately that grill guard saved the day. Had an interesting experiment earlier this past summer uh, with an all purpose plow. Two different size or frame size 25 horsepower tractors, a 1025R, a 3025E. And amazingly, the 1025R handled the plow, the plow a lot better than the 3025E, which ended up, I think it stalled it out uh, on multiple occasions if I'm right. So, you know, it's a, I don't know, maybe not a failure so much, but it did, well, it did fail to get the job done, but um, an interesting take on that when I would have thought perhaps it would have been the opposite. Now behind the scenes, we've actually had a lot of drone failures, things whacking trees, whacking, I don't even know what, getting chopped up by a mower, all sorts of crazy things that have gone on with the drones. And we've bought only one extra drone actually, with all the crashes that we've had, we're only on our second drone, which is pretty crazy because this thing has taken a beating. One of the products that I was really looking forward to reviewing and using, and I just couldn't let myself do it, was the Vivor Pallet Fork Safety Cage. And reviews are split on that. A lot of folks can see where I'm coming from. There are some that think it's way better than the alternative. I feel like it puts you in a dangerous situation and I wouldn't allow myself or anybody I know to use this thing. So I had to, ended up having to destroy this thing and, and make sure it was not usable by anybody because it's just very poor quality, poor welds, very lightweight, light duty. I feel like if, if your weight just all went to one direction, you're going to break right through this thing because you would be relying or depending on it, thinking it's going to help protect your life, and I think it's too sketchy for me, it may do the opposite. Our most recent failures were actually right on this lane just a week or two ago when we had a blizzard here, and you might be able to see all the glistening mud that's going on right there, and anyway, it froze up into these very deep ruts. And so the 1025R just completely bottomed out in these ruts right up to the axles. You couldn't steer, you were just stuck down in there. There was no ground clearance, could barely get traction because of that, and it was just, it didn't even cross my mind that that was gonna be an issue. I thought we were gonna have a lot of success there. And then in the same video, we used the 2038R, which really struggled in this lane too because of a lack of weight, because of, I think, the R4 uh, tread pattern on the tires, um, just a, a poor type of traction tire for snow and for ice. They struggled here, uh, clearing the, the parking pad and everything else as, as well. It was just a, it was a very bad video <laughs> overall, just with everything going wrong in a variety of ways. 
And so a lot of this is because we like to do experiments and sometimes we just want to see if we can find a new use for a tool and you don't know unless you try it. And so we show you guys and we take you along for the ride. Another example of this was trying out a pulverizer on the Summit tractor to put in uh, part of our food plot that we put in this summer. I didn't have a tiller available at the time. So I thought, hey, maybe I can work up the ground with this, this pulverizer and see what happens. And it really did not work very well. There were certain portions of it that worked okay, kind of with the roller and, and putting holes in the ground for seed and kind of packing it in there a little bit. But those front tines collected way too much debris and material, just made a mess of the whole thing. Do not recommend. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. We had a couple of different fails on the same trail in a chunk of our woods. I wanted to really make this a nice trail. And if this section worked well, I was gonna do it on the, the balance of the trails too. And I tried to use a tiller going through the woods, really smoothing everything out, taking the humps out and the dips and everything else. And I, I kind of had a feeling it would work pretty good. But unfortunately, there's so many roots, go figure, in the woods. I don't know where those things come from, but it was just a jarring experience to say the least. Very, very hard on the machine, on the tiller. Nothing broke, but it was, it was tough to get the results that you wanted and it was tough to even get it done because it was so uncomfortable and, and rocky and just bouncing all over the place. But that wasn't the only fail on that trail. So then when the fall came around, we had all sorts of leaves over there and me being a hunter, I like to clear the leaves off if I can and have some nice quiet trails to navigate through the woods without spooking everything out of the way from ear, within earshot. And I'd seen it mentioned from a, a couple of different folks that a flail mower could work well to get all the leaves off of there and mulch them up and, and this and that. And so we gave that a shot and all we found is that it kind of just blew them right through the rotor. It didn't chop them up. It just kind of pushed them right back behind there. Didn't get them out of the way. Didn't, didn't do anything of the sort. None of the, the things that we thought were going to happen with it actually happened. It was just a complete waste of time. So we ended up coming back through, I think, potentially with a landscape rake, if I remember right. I can't remember now. And that did a pretty good job, just what we were looking for. And not to be forgotten, a couple of summers ago, we had bought a Kubota BX. I wanted to do a video putting some front spacers on it to show you folks. And you know, that poor little BX, we still have it. <clears throat> not my favorite machine in the world, but uh, we ended up, there was one stripped out bolt in there. And then the next one that we were trying to take out, it just broke, it sheared right off. <laughs> it was a real goat rodeo. So ended up, they couldn't get, we took it into the, to the Kubota dealer. They couldn't get the bolts out of there. Couldn't fix any of that stuff. Had to replace the whole stinking front hub on there. You know, just if it would have left well enough alone, I think it would have been just fine, right? But we had to go trying to do something different. You know, that's what we get for it. Anyway, end up costing another couple hundred bucks, but that's just par for the course. And now, of course, these are just things that we happen to catch on camera. There's a lot of things and some aren't really failures, right? We have a lot of equipment that breaks down or leaks or something just goes wrong. I had uh, my John Deere Z970R uh, zero turn mower that I mow with out here. And for whatever reason, I, it only has 200 and some hours on it, but a belt wore, had worn down somehow so much that it broke. And when that belt broke, it took out a fan right by it. So it couldn't just be a simple belt that has to get replaced. I then had to replace a fan along with it. It's just like, <laughs> when things break sometimes, you just, you wonder, you just shake your head, right? Or it seems like, you know, we've got, um, you know, I've got my shop over uh, uh, 15 minutes away. I've got the house, I've got our other property. We actually are moving, so we had two houses. We had two shop locations while we were moving to. And it seems like whatever tool I need is always at the other location. It's never where I need it. So we're always trying to improvise and get something done. You need to have like five sets of tools, you know, so you can always have something wherever you need it. So hopefully some of you guys can relate to this and maybe, Maybe you won't feel so bad, right? It happens to other folks too, and uh, we're lucky enough to document it. But on that note, if you're watching, you might own a tractor. And if you do, you probably need attachments and we can help you out with that. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoyed today's video, you like to see when things go wrong, sometimes when they go right too, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.